Ned Rorum. Ned Rorum is actually more well known as a gay man than as a composer. He was born in 1923 and he is still alive today, actually, so he's almost 100. He, he lived a life very similar to Barber in the fact that he also went to the Curtis School of Music but didn't like it as much as Barber did. So instead, he worked for another gay composer, actually, Virgil Thompson, for a short time, and then he later studied at Juilliard and then moved to Paris. And it's Paris where Rorm started writing journals about his experiences and, and his music, musings about everything that he was thinking about, and also what it was like to be a gay man in Paris. He later would publish the Paris Journal of Ned Rorum a few years before the Stonewall Riots and the beginning of the gay liberation movement. So he was actually known as a gay icon in America because he was so willing to talk about just being a gay man without being afraid of it. In fact, one place in one of his journals, he said homosexuals are just as boring as heterosexuals. He wasn't afraid of just being who he was. <laughs> He later settled with composer and organist James Holmes, and they um, lived together for 35 years until Holmes' death. The final reason we should listen and we should learn the gay lives of composers is for diversity. And this past year, we've all been hearing a lot about the importance of diversity, especially as nationally, we're becoming more aware of how some people have a privileged life and how difficult other people's lives are. So it's been difficult for some, for some gay composers to get recognition because of the way that they work. But even outside of that, diversity is important to attract new audiences. Imagine finding out you can relate to a piece of music because you've lived similar lives to the composer. You might be interested in coming and hearing more or looking more into that composer because you have that personal um, similarity to them. The music and life story of the composer just might influence the listener in ways that other music that doesn't relate to them on a personal level may not. By performing a diversity of music styles and composers who live a diverse life, the audience may also find a piece that truly speaks to them. So for this final work, it's going to be a little more diverse musically. This will be Roram's first piano sonata, his third movement. And he definitely is leaning on more a modern sound. There aren't many normal chords in this piece that you would expect from Bach or Beethoven, but it has this really cool rhythmic appeal and also has a beautiful melody that starts around the middle. So I hope you enjoy. <laughs> 